What's up everybody? This is Paul Loeb with Ableton Op. We've gotten a lot of requests for one particular technique in Ableton and I think it's about time that I did a video tutorial on it. People often ask how they can take a full song that they've made in arrangement view and prepare it for live DJ style performance in session view. This is particularly useful for DJs and controllerists who want to create live remixes or mashups using one or more individual instruments or tracks from the original song. The follow-up question is usually then, how can you combine multiple songs into one live performance project? I'm going to give you an overview of how I do this using my latest song, Mad World, as an example. When I start to prepare a track for live performance, the first thing I do is think about which parts of the track I want to use live, and then I go about it almost like creating stems. So for this track, I can think of maybe four different parts or stems that I want to create. And Ableton will let me make some of these stems into loops, which are then easy to play against other tracks or samples during a live show. So the first part I want to use is this first verse. Let's hear what it sounds like. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. It's really nice, but when I'm playing live, uh, it's really not going to do me a whole lot of good. I really just need the vocals and not the piano, the pad, and all the other instruments in the background. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to isolate the vocals by soloing them and this vocals is really a group with all these different vocal tracks summed together but by pressing solo I can hear just the vocals all around me are familiar faces worn out plate and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to session view and create a new track called stems record and I'm gonna use this track uh, as an internal bus within Ableton to take a recording uh, and turn it into a you know stem to combine multiple tracks into one playable wave file uh, that we can use later on in session view so we're going to set the audio from to master so we're going to take the master channel and record it into a track and set audio to to sends only so that we don't get a uh, infinite feedback loop and we're going to turn this to record and then we're going to come back to arrangement view find the part that we want Notice we still have vocals soloed, so we're just going to get the vocals isolated by themselves. We'll press record, and we'll let Ableton do its thing. Here we go. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Bright and early for the daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. Their tears are filling up their glasses No expression, no expression Hide my head, I wanna drown my sorrow No tomorrow, no tomorrow Okay, great. So let's zoom in here a little bit and see what we are working with. What we're gonna try to do is make a perfect 16 bar loop. And it looks like I actually cut it off too early. It didn't go long enough. So let's try that one more time. Start at the same spot. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Bright and early for the daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. Their tears are filling up their glasses No expression, no expression Hide my head, I wanna drown my sorrow No tomorrow, no tomorrow And I find it cut Alright, so we let it go a little bit over, that's fine We can fix that in just a second So, the first thing we want to do with this clip Is change the warp algorithm By default, Ableton uses beats, which sounds okay, but it's not the best. Um, let's change it for to Complex Pro, and that's going to give us the best audio quality. Uh, the next thing we need to do is turn loop on and set it to be 16 bars exactly. So 16, 0, 0. And then 
you can see there's this space at the beginning. What this is is latency that's inherent to any computer recording system and it's really easy to compensate for and we can fix it in just one second. Um, and the easiest way to kind of hear that lag in action is if you uh, play what we recorded against the original tracks at the same time. So to do that we're going to take stems record out of record. We're going to hit tab to go to session view take the audio two and put it to master so we can hear it monitor on audio on auto and then uh, we're gonna solo it as well holding control so we still have the vocal soloed from before what we recorded and now we have this new track soloed as well and when I play both at once we're gonna hear kind of an echo which is that delay or latency I was talking about and then using my mouse here I'm gonna adjust the warp markers until they match so that we can get a, a perfect 16 bar loop that matches the original. So here's what it sounds like with both together. All around me, around me are familiar faces, worn out places. All right, it's pretty messy. So let's try to correct for it like this. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Perfect, right? So we've got 16 bar loop exactly. Uh, let's rename this clip to first verse and then what we're going to do is copy it to uh, a track in session view. To do that uh, we're going to drag the clip, hold it down with the mouse like we're going to move it and then press the tab button on the keyboard while still holding it down on the mouse. Come over here to session view and drop it right here on the clip called first verse. Um, and so now what we have is a 16 bar audio loop that we can use in other sessions uh, to play uh, like we're DJing live. So the next section we want to use is the main bass loop. Now that we've kind of figured out the process, we can go through and do these next sections pretty easily. So we're going to put stems record back to audio to sends only to get rid of that infinite feedback loop and we're going to put it in record. Now before we just so soloed the vocals because all we wanted was the vocal track. For this part I'll go ahead and let it play so you can hear it. We're just going to create a 8 bar loop and we want all the sounds together so we're going to record directly from the master bus not just uh, one particular instrument or stem. So here we go, we're going to put it in record and here we go. Okay, great. Um, so let's zoom in a little bit and see what we're working with here. Again, we want to change the warp mode to complex pro to get the best audio audio quality. Turn loop on. We're going to go for 8 bars exactly. And this time the latency is a little bit easier to fix because we want it to start right on beat 1, which is right here at the beginning. So we're just going to drag it over to bar 1. Uh, shrink this down here to 8 bar loop. Rename it bass loop. And do the same procedure where we hold with a mouse, drag, hold tab, and drop it right there on the clip. So now we've got this nice little loop that we can listen to by putting this uh, to the master so we can hear it right here. Okay, sounds great, and we had that problem with uh, infinite feedback loop I was talking about because I accidentally hit the record button. So we will avoid that in the future. Uh, okay, moving on, uh, I want to show you these other sections of the song that I want to create into stems. I'm not going to waste your time and go through and do each one because the process is the same, uh, but I'll show you the different clips. One is a loop of the chorus section that I made. It sounds like this. Yeah. 
So it's pretty much the same as that last bass loop, except it's got the vocals on top of it, um, and it's a 32 bar loop. Next we have a verse 2 section, which is not a loop, but rather is just a rather long one shot as it were, so it sounds like this. And I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad, the dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take, when people run in circles it's a very, very... So it's really nice. Then an outro loop, which is uh, 16 bars, which uh, is kind of more minimal, just drums, but it has a nice groove to it. And then finally, I copied on the wave version of the full length track. Uh, so it starts from the beginning, and I can bring it in anytime I want uh, in, and start from any point I want by just simply moving the start marker. Um, and it offers me ultimate flexibility in Ableton. So now that I have all these different stems or parts of the track um, together all on one track in Ableton, I'm going to rename it and call it something identifying like Mad World Stems. And then find a place on my hard drive. Uh, I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now, although usually I would put it into a special folder on my uh, portable drive that I use for performance and where I keep all my music files. Uh, I would call this Mad World Stems and simply drag it over to the folder. And what it's going to do is create this Mad World Stems project. Here it makes it with a one because I just did this before we started here. Um, and within there we have an Ableton set with all of these different stems that we just created. Um, and in the next step you'll see how easy it is to take those stems and play them immediately in a live DJ style performance template. So. Uh, speaking of that, we're going to now open up a new session, which is, save changes, yes, based on my Ableton Live DJ template for live performance with my APC40 MIDI controller. Now, you don't have to use the APC40. Uh, it works with pretty much any MIDI controller or just your keyboard and mouse like I'm going to show you right now. Here's a crossfader. We've got left and right, another track of fat beats um, coming in through here. Uh, just some audio clips I've loaded up. And then uh, in the last step, we created this Mad World Stems. I'm just going to drag it over here to the left channel, the A deck, as it were. And then, you know, I'm just going to give you a small demo of how it would work. Uh, by layering these different stems or parts of an original track you made in arrangement view, we turned into session view into these different clips. And now I'm going to show you how you can DJ with them live. Uh, I have a version of this Ableton Live DJ set as a free download on my website um, that you can get to work with and use it for your own purposes. Uh, again, this is Paul Loeb with Ableton Op, and here's a quick little demo of how it works. Tomorrow, all around me are familiar faces. What? 
that's it. Quick demo. Again, uh, I'm sure you can get a lot more creative using your own songs, different clips and stems, and other various beats and tracks to create your own DJ style live performance using Ableton Live. So again, this is Paul Loeb with Ableton Op. Uh, thank you very much.